All right, welcome back. Now let's take you to our person of interest. Torrential rains over the past three days have unleashed severe floods, landslides and flash floods across several regions and they've claimed <coughs> multiple lives. Now, who we're going to be bringing on to the show today is someone whose technology can actually make a change to the lives of those who've been affected. It's a beacon of hope. We're going to have the Indian Rescue Academy's founder. They've introduced a Portugal-based technology of ITIS Water Drone. It's a remarkable new tool that can aid in different kinds of flood relief efforts. Now, what makes uh, the ITIS Water Drone stand out is that it combines speed, strength and reliability to quickly reach the standard victim, deliver emergency supplies in the country's most vulnerable regions. It also has a capacity of carrying 100 kgs of weight. In situations where every second counts, this drone uh, sort of advanced technology could mean the difference between life and death. And the perfect example of how this innovation is stepping up is to tackle one of India's biggest challenges, the flood disasters. And we have the founder and CEO of uh, ITIS, Ankit Wak, with us on the program this morning. Uh, hi, Ankit. Uh, so glad that you could be with us here today. But before we sort of go into him and we bring him on, Let's just take a pause to see for ourselves what this water drone is really all about. Take a look. cool is that? It looks exactly like a life jacket and it's uh, there behind Ankit as well who joins us live now. Ankit, really cool stuff. I want to understand use cases first of the bat from you and the capacity uh, that this water drone can carry. Good morning to the both of you. Um, I think the ITIS water drone which is uh, co-branded with USAFE uh, here is, uh, is a game changer of sorts. Uh, the reason being that it is not every time that a swimmer or a rescue lifeguard can go out to a victim and can reach it as quickly as the uh, remote control life boy, as we call it, uh, or as the government designates it also, can actually make it to the victim. So this is uh, a capacity enhancer. It's able to get to uh, the victim as soon as possible and be able to get the victim back uh, or stabilize the victim uh, in in any kind of a, a, a you know flood or emergency scenario, especially in water. So, uh, Ankit, you have a really interesting story yourself. I hope it's okay if we spend a few minutes discussing Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You're someone who used to be an international athlete, I believe a swimmer also. And now, yeah. I are, the, the rescue services that you run, they assist states over the years in different kind of rescues. So can you Absolutely. just walk us a little bit through your own story, how you came to founding this in the first place and the different ways in which before this drone lifeboat, you were helping out in different emergencies? Absolutely. So uh, like, like you said, I used to be a swimmer. I swam for the country. I swam for world championships. Uh, I eventually uh, moved to Australia to uh, you know, learn new techniques in life saving. Uh, at that same point of time, I was also undertaking some basic education overseas. I, I think uh, as would happen to most swimmers, I got sick of swimming in a box of uh, you know 50 meters by 12 and a half meters in chlorinated water every day. So I got into what is called in Australia surf life saving. So surf life saving is a major uh, culture in Australia where you know volunteers compete in ocean sports and they also uh, work on uh, work in the ocean and contribute to community by you know uh, on weekends by being lifesavers. I went up the chain uh, in surf life saving, got a lot of experience in a whole lot of things from um, being a lifeguard on a beach to you know understanding administration and overall uh, you know concepts of life saving as the future worked on. I've 
been able to work in life saving not only in india but uh, sorry not only in australia but in the uk in italy and various other countries so got a very global perspective that's when i realized i think this was something that was majorly lacking in india and i came back to form itis itis is the greek god of safety uh, the original objective of itis was to make world class equipment but uh, i also realized very quickly that with the indian rescue academy our training department uh, the, the customers who are primarily government such as ndrf sdrf fire departments home uh, home guard civil defense uh these guys wanted to learn the skills that i had acquired over the years so i developed a really good team of trainers uh today indian rescue academy has trained over 65000 rescuers uh, uh, across india and about 90% of them are from the government space so like uh, all the organizations that i mentioned they all go through their post service training with us hmm that's when we realized that introducing new technology into this uh in, into rescue services in the country are especially important with the current government under the leadership of narendra modi ji uh, taking up uh, technology in a big way and embracing technology we thought that this would be the perfect move to make and hence okay. uh, sure uh, one of the outcomes of that is the uh, water drone right ankit i'm very interested to understand the tech behind this a little more and i feel like you really need to put your hands on that uh, on that drone behind you to actually show it to us in detail and also it looks like it's uh, it's pilot controlled is it ai driven what exactly is the tech really built on is it automatically hunting for the person or the thing in need or are you driving it like how does it really work Okay, so like you said, uh, it's a it's a what it's actually a remote control life boy. So mm. if you remember those rings that you have in your swimming pools whenever you went for a swim, uh, it's made out of similar material. It's made out of HDPE. Uh, but the good thing is it's got its own uh, internal drive system. So a previous version of it had uh, a self writing boy on top, so that in case it ever flipped, it was able to uh, write itself. but this version has got two drives so it's got a drive on this side and it's got a drive at the at the rear uh it works on an electric jet pump so uh impellers inside it suck the water in and throw it out the the bottom of it at a really fast speed and the uh, the jet pumps nozzles are able to be you know uh, tilted every direction uh, uh, they're omnidirectional so you're able to then maneuver the the life boy so to say uh, towards the victim it's very uh, easy to use it comes with a typical joystick kind of a remote so it's what kids today are playing with uh, you get off your playstation you got the same kind of uh, easy to use uh, capability that you can have and uh, it can be placed anywhere it's able to uh, it doesn't you know it doesn't use ai at the moment and does not autonomously look at victims so you have to go with line of sight but uh, i think uh, in the future that is something that can be looked at uh, there are but we've not uh, we've not worked on that at the moment but there are uh, versions of it which can have potential military applications uh, potential uh, beyond the rescue work that it is doing hmm. uh, but obviously eventually it is to save lives for the nation so ankit we want to talk about that exactly right now uh, the floods that are going on in the northeast uh, or other flooding situations that have taken place walk us through adapting it to the indian context so what i mean when i say that is visi- low visibility for example working with our forces on the ground who are engaging in these rescue efforts what have been the trickiest parts in that adaptation process and is it complete is it is it ready to be used now in all flood situations i believe the first rescue happened a month ago is is what i was reading but yes absolutely so i think uh, one of the uh, key things is for us to understand is getting into the water or being aquatic in nature is not part of our indian culture so it is something that uh, is kind of alien to us to you know swim and go and rescue someone it is something that has to be taught and uh, uh, you know enhanced and enforced over a period of time that's something that we've realized with the indian rescue academy uh one thing that this uh kind of equipment actually is able to surpass is that fear and therefore you're able to put it in the water where uh you know traditionally a swimmer might not be able to reach quickly or might not be willing to go there additionally it also could be used in swift water so you've got really strong flowing floods mm. 
your uh, remote control live boy is able to get in uh, able to be re reaching people in as far as fast as 20 knots of uh, you know swift water so that's what happens in urban flooding today primarily or even in uh, you know rural flooding mm -hmm. uh, like you you mentioned the northeast states you've got some of the biggest rivers in the northeast yeah. and especially because of the hilly terrain uh, the f rivers flow very very quickly mm -hmm. so that is uh, exactly where uh, this kind of equipment is becoming a game changer. We've sold these to the National Disaster Response Force, the Army uses it, the Navy uses them. Uh, they also have application with the uh, Oil and National Gas Corporation, ONGC, uh, for, uh, you know, rig li as uh, potential uh, life-saving equipment on the rigs. So it's uh, really being uh, taken up by the government very, very quickly. Oh, that's great to know, Ankit. I also want to understand the reach of this drone. If you're saying it is not AI powered and it does not really have eyes of its own, if I can put it sort of, you know, dumb it down for our viewers as well, then how exactly is it navigating and how far can it go? Well, you can do rescues within line of sight. So ideally, you could do uh, a rescue within uh, about 500 to a kilometer of range. Uh, and that is when it's most effective. Uh, also, when you were not in line of sight, the challenge is for you to be able to visually pinpoint uh, and be accurately able to, you know, hone down on a victim, so to say. Uh, so it's got a, it's got good range and good capability to be able to, you know, maneuver. Uh, it was developed out of big wave surfing uh, and uh, in Portugal. So there were a lot of requirements. Some of the biggest waves uh, happen in Portugal. If you've heard of Nazare, uh, it's the biggest wave in the world. So uh, the Portuguese lifeguards uh, kind of needed a game changer to be able to access uh, or reach the water, uh, reach the victim when the water was rough. So uh, this is some of the uh, okay. things that the, the remote control lifeboy is able to, you know, uh, address and uh, actually be able to save lives.